Greetings. Welcome to Calculus in the PM. I'm your host, Mr. Sindelka. And first, a message from our sponsors, me. My chimney sweep services, as you guys have seen my posters before. Old Man Winter is coming soon. Isn't it time to get your chimney swept out? Specializing in coal and wood burning fireplaces. Coal, it's nature's fuel. What's there to be afraid of? It's totally organic. Coal is. Why do we not burn coal? Why should we? Oh, you guys, that, that carbon tax is killing my business. Terrible. I'm being facetious. Plus, I hate heights, so I'm not going to clean your face. But you would call me if you needed it, and I did that. Let's take a look at B and C here. So, recall. You're given, because we're combining now. And we've seen a little bit of this already, but let's get some more practice. If we have a quotient, we'll use the quotient rule. Derivative of the top, leave the bottom alone, etc. right? Minus top left alone, derivative of the bottom, square whatever's on the bottom, as is. Now, what if this bottom function, for example, is a composite function? That means we include the chain rule inside. Well, we've seen an example of this already, but Let's take a look again. Because we sometimes need practice. dy by dx is equal to the derivative of the top, 2x cubed, 6x squared. Leave the bottom as is. The subtraction part is built into the formula. And then I write this down without touching it. Top thing left alone. The derivative of the bottom, that's a composite function. So I bring the 4 down, Q. Leave the inside as is. Now I do the derivative of the inside. That happens to be 4. OK? All over the thing squared. To the 8. OK. Now, this is good. This is your first step. I said, though, that we're going to just focus on, because there's nothing much to this lesson here. It's just a little more practice. What if the answers on a multiple choice question tell you nothing like that, right? This is first step. So on a question where I say show first step only, you'd stop. Any questions about what we've got for first step? OK. Factoring, then. Don't multiply this out if you're going to factor it. Well, there's some simple things to multiply. I would, I would multiply it 2, 4, and 4 possibly. But what is the common factor in everything here? Let's just take a look. Actually, I wouldn't even multiply those 2's. This is an obvious one, right? You notice also the highest power of just lone x is x squared. You take that out. And the number 2 I could take out. I could take out of each thing. And remember, this is what separates the first chunk from the second chunk, right? So why would you multiply that out? It would make it a monster. So we'll just try this where we said the 2 is in common with both. The x squared is in common with both. 4x minus 1 to the power of the lowest power, 3. Now left behind, I'm going to just use square brackets to emphasize. I'm taking a 2 out of this, so that's a 3. I'm taking x squared out of this, so it's nothing. I'm taking 4x minus 1 to the power of 3 out of that, so it's just one group of that left, 4x minus 1. Subtracting. I've heard two things at once. So I've divided out the 2, right? And I'm dividing out the x squared, so I'm left with a single x. But the numbers, I heard 16, and that's correct. Move the numbers to the front. So, so 16. X. And the 4x minus 1 is gone, right? You agree that's 
it's maybe conceptually tougher to think of at first, but it's a lot easier than multiplying <coughs> anything up. The bottom left. Well, we're going to tamper with the bottom right now. Instead, I'm going to tamper with the bottom because we've got three groups here, right? Cute. There are exact matches. Yeah. It's just a little tidying up, and then we're good. 2x squared. I think we can do this in our heads. So 12x minus 16x. Minus. I was trying to do too much at once, then I was going to go. Minus 3. Are you going to pull the negative sign out all of a sudden? You got a minus sign you can pull out and then you're good, right? You guys ever just do this to save yourself right in the line again? Sure. Okay. I was going to do it right off the hop, but stop. So. Okay. That's good, right? So you'd m be more likely to see that as an answer on an A, B, C, D multiple choice question. Okay, sure. What I was doing here was saying, distribute the 3, so 12x minus 16x. So 12x minus 16 is the negative. Is positive 12 minus 16. So that was the initial negative 4. And then the minus 3, nothing to match with that. So that was the initial minus 3 there. Question, where? I'm wondering more how you got the 16 like when you were multiplying. Oh, okay. When we factored out 2x squared, this one's gone. And the cube's gone. But I still have 4 and 4. That's where the 16 came. That's yes. Any others? Good. So how did you change the signs? This part here? So initially it was minus, minus, right? I'm just overemphasizing. Then I say, well, if I factor out negative 1 from both, they become positives, and I moved it out here. OK. I did do too many steps at once for everyone. Follow along. Tell you what, I'll do the other example. So when I see this, I think right away power of one half, right? Okay, I'm going to try to memorize. Uh, I got enough room. I could do it here. So my C example. Let's go with f of x equals. The derivative of the first thing, this is a product, right? So 2. Second thing left alone. The plus sign is built into the product rule, which, by the way, tomorrow's test only, you'll have a gift. The, I'll show you the formula sheet out. You'll have the product rule given. On a reference sheet because I'll do it just like regular calculus. Anyways, now I've got within the product rule chain rule. So one half, I'm doing the 5x minus 1. Right? So one half, I'm going to put that in brackets because it's multiplying. 5x minus 1 untouched, negative one half. Derivative of the inside is 5. And that's your first step. First step into a season of tears. Let's see. The rest is just plain old factoring. Remember, this is the only thing in common here. That's negative. So take the lowest, yeah, but take the lowest exponent, right? Negative one half. Factor it out like that. Also, Let's factor out this half. Can you have a fraction? Let's just, let's see what happens. 
Because when you have a fraction in one and not the other, it's probably easier to do it this way. I'm going to drop the color scheme. So I'm going to take out one half and uh, five x minus one. I'm not going to do too much. I was tempted to put that as root on the bottom right now. I won't. Now. I chose to get rid of the fraction from here now. So that means I've got to say, what's 2 divided by 1 half? No. Nope. 4. Four. Four. What is, I don't care what this is, what is something to the half divided by something, the same thing, to the negative 1 half? 1. one. Power of 1. So, don't be confused by the innards. To the 1. I won't even write to the 1, right? Plus, okay, I've got the 5 on the back end. I'm going to move it up the front. Just, it's typical to list your numbers first. 2x plus 3 is still there. And everything else was factored out the half and the 5x minus 1 negative 1. You see where we're at? I did a lot of things. In one step, though. So I'll just pause and see if you guys got any questions. Sometimes it takes a minute to sink in. Okay. What I have in front really should go on the denominator. The two on the denominator and the root. That's more likely to be what you see in the back of the answer book, etc. And on the top, I'm going to do my x's first. 20x plus 10x is 30x, correct? I make mistakes. Stop. Minus 4 plus 15. Yeah, 11. That's as sweet as it gets, which ain't that sweet. We just no. ignore everything we factor. Ignore everything we factor. Oh, this? This. You see how this 2 is really the 2 on the bottom. Oh, okay. This, negative 1 half, That's really means we're downtown. I get it. Okay. Now, other questions? I'll just pause this here. We're good.